Hi, Patrick. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> so I wanted uh, I wanted to take some time to well I I wanted to have something for everyone to share in your departure with. Mm. <laughs> um, I don't think this is something that we would normally do, and I'm not sure if I've ever done this, but um, you have given so much to this studio, and um, it sucks yeah. <laughs> that you're not going to be here, but I also, as I said to you when we spoke over the phone, um, I am someone who very much believes that when we get to the end of this road mm -hmm. before the next, the one thing I want to be able to do is look back and say, I followed my heart. I did everything I could. And you're now doing that. And you're doing that in a way <laughs> that is probably unlike any instructor we will <laughs> right. ever um, have. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just want, I, I wanted to take the time to let you know how much you've meant to this studio and you have, you have inspired so many actors. Um, you have been such, it has been such a pleasure to work with you. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. And I met, I've worked with a lot of different instructors and you really are someone who, you are heart centric, you love what you do, you are great at what you do. And <laughs> now you are on a new journey. Yep. And so can you tell me a little bit about this new journey that you are embarking yeah, on? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so. I started studying in, in college and, and didn't know what I wanted to do because um, I played sports all throughout college and I wanted to play lacrosse. Uh, fate had other uh, ideas in mind and I blew up my knee so I couldn't do it. So I studied acting because I enjoyed it but I never took it seriously and um, fell in love with it. And that was where it, it pulled me. Uh, and very fortunate to have a, a professor, the late Ken Strong, who's fantastic. Um, He's the first person. And, th and looking back on my life now, I'm like, that's probably where this sense of, of uh, purpose and en enjoyment on the coaching side came from. Mm. He sat me down after our first class and he said, what do you want to do? And I was like, uh, I don't know. I like acting. He said, you can do it if you want. It's going to be hard. you got to work. And it was the first person who ever said, this is something you can do. I believe in you. And that really was the catalyst to to dive in head first. To have that that drive, that passion, that feeling, but hesitant to, I don't know if I can do this, you know? And uh, having a professional say, you got it, you can do it. It's not gonna be handed to you. You have to work at this. Uh, and that's the kind of led me down the path. And, and as I was uh, exploring and growing as an actor, there was always something um, that I, I had always a call to serve. My father served in the Air Force for almost 30 years. Both my grandparents or grandfathers, excuse me, served in uh, the Army and, and Navy. My cousin is currently serving as an officer in the Navy. Um, so it's, it's in my family and it was something I always wanted to do, but acting always pulled me out. I'd, I'd be meeting a recruiter. And this is in my mid-20s. Thank God I didn't do it because <laughs> there's a reason for everything, I think. Because if I went in my mid-20s, I'd be oh, up the creek. Uh, what's going on? Um, so I think maybe there's a reason. The opportunity didn't, it didn't come until, until later, but it was still there. Uh, you know, I'd get a book a gig and be gone for a week or something. Or, um, so it was always there. And, uh, and I couldn't quite, you know, quiet that, that call. Uh, and then when the strike came around, there was a lot of time to, to really use in self-reflection and, um, and talking to Emily and, and just saying, hey, I think this is something I want to do. Talk to my dad um, and went through the process, started, you know, and God, it was, a, it was an arduous process. <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah, eventually, you know, made the decision, took the test, went through the medical process and um, 
uh, swore in, which was a really cool moment. I got to have my dad swear me in because um, any officer, whether retired or um, active, uh, can swear you in. So I did that, and uh, I knew what was happening as far as like, oh, I have to go to basic training because it doesn't matter if you serve in the reserve component or active duty. You go to basic because it is basic military training. That's what everyone does. Um, but one of, one of the things I realized quickly was uh, they once you, once you sign that paper, they tell you when and where and what you'll be doing. So uh, that was kind of a surprise, but it's probably, like I said, um, for a reason. Like if I did this when I was 25, you know, I probably mentally couldn't, couldn't uh, wasn't cut out for it. Uh, and if I spend too much time dawdling until June or July and have the summer, you know, maybe I wouldn't, maybe something would come up or I wouldn't be ready. Maybe it is one of those, got to just jump in head first and go for it. So, uh, it's that, it's, I've always felt that call to serve. I, I believe, um, we live in a fantastic, uh, the greatest country and provides, um, the men and women who serve do it so uh, everyone else can have the freedoms and liberties that we want to enjoy. Um, and, you know, I just want to um, do my part, you know. Um, I think one of the, excuse me, whew, <laughs> one of the um, biggest driving forces is um, um, my family. <laughs> Dang it, Eric, you got me all <laughs> emotional. Um, whew, excuse me. Um, but um, doing that, um, I think answering that call makes them proud. Um, I think answering those call, following what you're called to do in your heart. It's, it's what brought me to... Um, acting, which brought me to coaching, which brought me to uh, Atlanta, which brought me here. The first um, uh, um, acting or audition I had ever, I came here, and I was I was a client for two, three years or something. You know, uh, it, it all stemmed from um, finding that passion, believing in what you can do, and 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 then working at it. Uh, and um, and yeah, I think just to continue doing that and, and strive for excellence. Actually, one of the the three core values of the Air Force is integrity first, uh, service before self, and excellence in all we do. And that is so closely tied to acting. Or any any uh, discipline or passion you have, excellence. Strive. We're not perfect. We're humans. You know that as well as everyone. Um, but striving to get better every day. Be better today than you were yesterday, and then yet tomorrow be better, you know, and um, and maybe that's where it it, it the, there's a closer connection to these two seemingly opposite realms, you know, uh, uh, kind of collide. Um, when I uh, went to a UTA weekend, which is a unit training assembly at the base, I'll be stationed in Charleston. Um, they had a bunch of people come in, and one guy was a um, senior master sergeant, which is an E8, and that was his last day on. On Charleston base, he was going to be transferred to, I can't remember the base, it's in Alaska, and be promoted to chief, which is E9, the highest rank an enlisted man can make. And he's served for years and years in security forces with Condoleezza Rice and I think, uh, I can't remember the other secretary of state. And, uh, and he said, remember your why. And I'm sitting there like, I know, I've heard that so many times. Like, that's what we do here. We, you know, when we talk about drive, what is your why? And I'm like, is, I'm not really on base of the Air Force right now. Remember your why. Why do you do it? What is it that pulls you? What is it that calls you to do it? Uh, and it, it was this kind of um, feeling in this world of unknown, because it's still, even though I grew up with my father and I wasn't in it, so I know a little bit about it, but it's different when you're actually doing it. But there was this moment of, okay, I know this. This is this is right. This was a really cool feeling. So that was great to hear, especially from this, this um, uh, senior master sergeant who was about to be a chief, um, who's been in it for, I don't know, 30 plus years or something. Remember your why. And it was verbatim, remember your why, that call. Why are you pulled to do this? And um, 
and I think, yeah, it, it happened for a reason. I'm here because I probably wasn't ready before, um, and uh, and now I feel like I am, and I must be crazy to go join that 37 to be like, yeah, let me go hang out with a bunch of 20-year-olds and see if I can keep up. But um, but it um, I'm excited about it. Um, it's, it's bittersweet, to say the least, um, because, uh, you know, I... I love uh, acting, I love coaching, I love working with great people, which is what we have here, this Catapult family, thanks to you. Um, this is the best studio I've ever worked at with the best people, and I'm not saying that to blow smoke. Um, I I just truly enjoy walking through that door and spending time, you know, sometimes, you know, my wife will be like, why are you still at work? <laughs> Come home already. I get lost. I get caught up in just the the, the great people who are here. But uh, I'm going to miss that a lot. Um, but I'll definitely come back when, uh, when I look a little different. Um, I should have hair at that point because they're going to shave me right when I get there. But I should have hair by the time I get back. Um, and uh, one of the coolest things in this industry, and I think it's maybe um, true with a bunch of different industries, I don't know because this is kind of where I've lived as far as an adult in, in the professional world. Is um, I, I've crossed paths with people um, many, many, many times. The world is a lot smaller than you think, and you're on set or you know someone. I mean, that's how we met because I worked with John D'Aquino back in Charlotte, and uh, Diana Scott said, "You got to go check out Eric because he's cool with John." And I was like, "Oh, great!" You know, we the the world. Uh, in which we live, there's a lot of paths that cross. So I, I, I believe, and I, I know, I'm going to be back, and I'm going to see you guys again at some point. Um, uh, but uh, for now, it is, it is, it's a bittersweet to say the least. It's, uh, I'm excited about the prospect. I'm nervous, but um, I think that holding on to that, like you were saying, you know, trust where you're being pulled. Follow your heart, um, and uh, and that you know that always helps. Um, I say it in acting class all the time. I'm like, trust your gut. There's a reason you have that instinct to take a step forward or to take a step back or to move. Listen to those instincts. Listen to what your your heart is telling you to do in the moment. Um, if we can sometimes block out the noise of what other people are telling us and follow that. Um, in my experience, I haven't really steered me wrong so uh, I'm excited nervous a little sad um, but uh, I think overall saying uh, what is it Winnie the Pooh said how lucky am I to have something so hard to say goodbye to I probably butchered that you know the quote <laughs> yeah, right the quote. Yeah. it's 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 a I feel blessed to to have a hard goodbye yeah. Because if not, uh, yeah, it wouldn't have meant something. So. Yeah. I love all that, man. Um, so there's one last thing I wanted you to. So if you could, I'd love for you, if there's anything you wanted to say to all the students that you've worked with. Oh, gosh. Yeah. I know, if you want to say it to the camera and just a sort of. Uh, a, a, a goodbye, see you later. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, first I'll say see you later. I don't really like to say goodbye because then there's this um, kind of definitive, this is the end, and I don't believe that is. I think, as I said, our paths will cross. This is a much smaller world and community than we think. So um, thank you. Thank you for coming to class. Thank you for bringing your creativity and your passion I feel so lucky because I get to share what I'm passionate about. Um, I said, hopefully, and thank you to your parents as well, because without your parents, I wouldn't get to work with you and do what I love doing in a place I love doing it. So, um, this is a great industry. Well, this is a great craft. <laughs> the industry can be hit or miss, but the craft is fantastic. It, it, it pushes us to empathize. It's, it, it makes us empathize. It makes us think about other people and humans and creativity and what it is to explore, what it is to be human and explore those emotions. And you have to, it makes us better people. It makes us better people 
you know, you're driving down the road and someone cuts you off, <laughs> you know, take a second and be like, well, maybe there's something going on. Maybe, you know, he has a sick child in the back, right? Can't say I always do that on the roads here in Atlanta, but maybe it does. But it makes us better. And anytime you're working on a craft and pushing yourself to be better, it, it helps you in every aspect of life. It makes you a better person. I'm going to quote the stairs again. Life begins at the end of your comfort zone, so it's time to start getting comfortable being uncomfortable. Push yourself. Strive for excellence. Uh, continue to do what you do. Have fun. Be passionate. Um, thank you. I, uh, I do believe I'll see you all again at some point. Um, this isn't goodbye. It's a see you later. And um, I'm truly grateful.